Royal Grenada Police force units to be outfitted with body cameras by end of September to enhance its service delivery. We'll have details to this story and more in the National Report. Welcome back with the details to the news for Wednesday, August 26, 2020. I am Rakesha St. Louis. A section of officers within the Royal Grenada Police Force will be outfitted with body cameras to improve the accountability of the force as they interact with the public. Acting Commissioner of Police Edwin Martin made the announcement during the RGPF's press conference on Wednesday. Commissioner Martin explained that only officers attached to the Rapid Response Unit, RRU, Drug Squad and the Traffic Department will be given body cams. The initiative, which is scheduled to commence at the end of September, will be reviewed after six months with the view to extend it to each unit. Going forward, the force is now well poised for the implementation of another initiative. By the end of September this year, we will be implementing the use of body-worn cameras for police officers. The initial rollout will involve the RRU, or Rapid Response Unit, the Drug Squad, and the Traffic Department. The effectiveness of this initiative will be monitored on an ongoing basis, and a review will take place after six months of implementation, when a determination will be made on implementing this initiative across all departments of the police force. Acting Commissioner Martin said various police force around the world have implemented body cams and the results are exceptionally positive. He is hopeful that by implementing this measure, the force will become more effective and accountable in its ability to gather and capture evidence and in service delivery. It is our hope among other benefits of this initiative, that it will contribute to mitigating adversarial interactions between police officers and members of the public. It will significantly enhance our capacity to gather and capture evidence at the scene of crime. And it would also provide a platform for investigative review if this becomes necessary. Continuing the news, the General Hospital is the recipient of 27 hospital beds. The donation was made by the New York-based Grenadian retired Lieutenant Nimrod Oliver. Director of Hospital Services Dr. Carol McIntosh told GIS during a telephone interview that the beds will provide extra comfort to the patients and assist the staff to efficiently deliver top-class care to the sick. She explained that the beds, which are electrical with anti-bed sore mattresses, will be distributed to each ward at the hospital and in Carrie Coombe. According to Dr. McIntosh, any donation of beds and equipment to the health sector will always be welcomed. The hospital is always in need of hospital beds. We are talking across the board. So we are in need of approximately 400 hospital beds because we are 165 here at the General Hospital. We are 44 bed at the Princess Alice Hospital, 28 bed at the Princess Royal Hospital, and at times 80 beds at Mount Gay and 60 beds at Richmond Home. And that gives and take depending on the people coming in. Um, that's just general hospital beds. And then I want to clarify because we then need ICU beds, we need cribs for the pediatric patients. So there's a different type. And then we need examination beds or trolleys to bring patients from one site to another. So as a hospital service, we are always in need of a variety of hospital beds. We will place them in different wards, a few in each ward, and several of them will be sending up to Princess Alice Hospital once we have completed our process of, of sanitizing and a biomed has reviewed them and cleared them. The beds are valued at U.S. $20,000. Oliver told GIS the relatively new beds were purchased at an auction. He explained that Grenada's development is always foremost in his mind, and whatever he can do to assist in further development, he will. 
I saw the opportunity, um, you know, didn't discuss it with, with anyone, but saw the opportunity with the bids and I just decided to uh, to go ahead and get it and um, hope that it could have been of good use um, to the people of Grenada. 27 bids, that lot was uh, 27. It was actually two lots of 27 each. And I, I tried to get both, but uh, the second one, some, so that would have been a total of 54. So I was, so basically it's a, it's, it's a government auction and uh but the beds they're 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 pretty good and uh, and you know they were in high demand so um the second set someone i would, I would bid it by a by a by a, by a lot a lot a lot um so i uh, the beds are they were in service at the uh university hospital um in ohio and like so you, you know in the u.s here you know like every two years or so you would um you change equipment. So they're fairly new. This is the National Report. The news will continue after the break. Protect yourself and our community from COVID-19. Wash your hands frequently with soap and water for at least 20 seconds. If soap and water are not available, use an alcohol-based hand sanitizer with at least 70% alcohol. Use a tissue when blowing your nose, sneezing, or coughing. Immediately discard the tissue properly and wash or sanitize your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Let's do our part to ensure that each and every Grenadian remains healthy. To stay up to date, visit the Government of Grenada's webpage or the Ministry of Health's Facebook page. For more information, contact the Ministry of Health's hotline by calling 53-VIRUS. This has been a public service announcement brought to you by the Ministry of Health. Welcome back. Chief Magistrate at the St. George's Magistrate Court was the recipient of technological equipment for the court for the Tri-Island State. The contribution was made through the joint efforts of the British High Commission in Grenada, along with the U.S. Embassy. The UK-US funded programs seek to support the criminal justice sector of the Eastern Caribbean. On Wednesday, resident British Commissioner Wendy Freeman and the Charged Affairs at the United States Embassy in Grenada officially handed over the equipment. Remote court sessions were done during the lockdown as part of adhering to the COVID-19 protocols. Wendy Freeman is delighted to be part of the initiative. Because of the COVID pandemic and the courts um, haven't been able to function as normal that they normally would, uh, we're very happy that the, we've been able to supply this equipment to help the courts function remote working and, and complying with the social distancing and health protocols. So very glad to see the equipment is here and I'm sure it will be put to very good use, um, if not already. So thank you very much. Delighted that it's here. The court has resumed the court sessions but is adhering to the COVID-19 protocols. However, the use of remote sessions will continue if some issues are raised. Chief Magistrate at the St. George's No. 1 Magistrate Court, Tamara Gill, said that this prompt contribution will assist the courts in executing the necessary task. We're conducting hearings, adhering to social distancing protocols. We are limited limiting the number of persons allowed in court at any one time on entry your hands are sanitized and you're required to wear a mask and you can see this courtroom is large enough to facilitate adequate social distancing protocols now in appropriate cases it will be necessary for us to conduct hearings or parts of hearings remotely for example if a party is unwell or considered high risk for COVID-19. It would not be in the best interest of anyone for that person to attend court physically. In a case like that, the court must resort to the use of equipment and allow that person to participate by video link. Your Excellencies, COVID or no COVID, this equipment is vital to the functioning of our courts generally. And you can rest assured that everything here will be put to maximum use in the furtherance of the administration of justice at the magisterial level in Grenada. 
Finally, in the news, in an effort to promote climate smart agricultural techniques among rural farmers, officials from the Climate Smart Agriculture and Rural Enterprise Program, SIAP, engaged over 15 farmers and backyard gardeners of St. Patrick, offering them some of the recommended climate smart agricultural practices that they can implement on their fields and gardens to improve their productivity. We hear more in this report from Mina Booker. Climate smart agriculture is an approach that helps to guide actions needed to transform and reorient agricultural systems to effectively support the development and ensure food security in a changing climate. This is one of the focuses by the Climate Smart and Rural Enterprise Program SIEP as it hosted its Climate Smart Agriculture Awareness Initiative at the St. Patrick's Anglican Schoolyard on Friday, 21st August. A session of such magnitude will help farmers and backyard gardeners of the parish to be more cognizant of how their agricultural activities can influence climate change and more so food security. Presentations were made by two extension assistants who covered climate-friendly agricultural practices, including mulching, terracing, rainwater harvesting, drainage, irrigation, crop rotation, and others. Hortense Philip was one of the facilitators who presented to some 19 farmers that attended the session. She says the CSA Awareness Series will bring to the ground issues with climate change, promoting a greater understanding of the implications for the agricultural sector. The participants in particular, they are fully aware as to what is climate change, what, are, what is climate smart agriculture, and it's just a, a little refresher because they are fully experienced, they are fully knowledgeable as to what they should do as it relates to climate change and to practice climate smart agricultural practices. We have challenges as it relates to climate change and we're looking at improving and increasing productivities for farmers. We're looking at securing our food, food security as well as um, encouraging farmers to become more resilient as it relates to climate change. Farmer Emlyn St. Louis has already begun implementing some climate smart agricultural techniques at her farm. She says given some of her challenges, the CSA practices have been very useful. Climate smart. I think that is wonderful. So I have my, my water tank and it was sponsored by the people of Grand Coda. And also my compost pile, I have this as well. So I use this in my garden. With the compost, it will keep it really nice and standing strong. And then you get more benefits from it. It will it have a, a, a greater lifespan. You can pick your fruits or vegetable or whatever and you can leave it without putting it in the refrigerator and it will stand for quite a long time. So I think that is a better way to go and I, I enjoy doing this. According to Saeb, this is one way that they aim to raise awareness on climate smart agricultural practices and how climate change can affect agriculture and food security. For the Ministry of Agriculture, I am Mina Buka. Thank you, Mina. That report just ended the national report for today, Wednesday, August 26th. Let's recap the top story. Royal Grenada Police force units to be outfitted with body cameras by end of September to enhance its service delivery. On behalf of the entire news team here at the Government Information Service, I am Rakesha St. Louis saying thank you for joining us. Until next time.